In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create and use some user-defined parameters for our dimensional constraints. Okay, so I've got here, I've got a drawing. It's basically a rectangle with um, a few uh, geometric constraints assigned and two dimensional constraints assigned, kind of like we've done in a previous lesson. And we see that our, our formula is that our length here is D1 and it is set to 5,000 units and D2 is set to half of D1. Um, so this length will always be half as the size of this length. And we want to go ahead and define some user-defined parameters. So if we look in our parameter manager, up here in the upper left-hand corner, we have a little button that says create a new user parameter. So I'm going to click on that. And what we're going to do is, let's just say that this is maybe like some sort of a, a plate and we need to have some uh, holes drilled in it in the four corners. And so what we're going to do is we're going to define a, a diameter of a hole and we're going to define a distance offset that we would like to have um, to place those so that we can make sure that they're always the same. So let's go ahead and just do the offset first. So I'm going to go ahead and create a user defined uh, parameter and I'm going to call it uh, just 01 for offset 1 just to make it simple. And I'm going to give it a distance of let's say 200 units. Let's make it 300 units. I'm going to create another user-defined parameter and this is going to be the diameter of the circle so let's just call this D1. Well, nope, can't use D1, it's used already. So DIA1 and let's give it a size of 100. Okay, so we've got them defined. And now let's just go ahead and draw a circle. We can kind of just draw it anywhere we want, any size we want. And um, first of all, I'm going to tell it what size that I want it to be by using my user-defined variable. So I'm going to tell it to do a diameter dimensional constraint. I'm going to pick my circle. Just pick any place to place it. And where it asks me for my length, I'm going to go ahead and just put DIA1 and it's going to make it that diameter. Okay, so we can already look at it and see that, you know, maybe we want to change the size and we can because it's a this is parametric, so I can say let's change that to 150. Make it a little bit bigger. Okay, now we want to locate it. So we're going to use a linear dimensional constraint. We're going to pick first point here, the second point is going to be the center of the circle. I'm just going to drag this over wherever wherever and we're going to tell it that this is going to be 01 for offset 1. Let's create another one. Pick here, pick the center, drag over. Again, 01 for offset 1. And now we have a circle that is equally spaced off the corner and it's set to a predefined size. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've copied this circle over and I've set up my additional constraints on each one. I went ahead and, and did that on my own so as to not to take too much of your time. And now we can see that once we got it set up we have a few options. First of all let's just kind of make a few notes about how uh, these dimensional constraints work. First of all as I zoom notice that they they change size uh, to kind of always be the same size. That way they're easier to read and they can be as small as, ne as, as possible and and, and yet still readable as you zoom in and out. Um, the other thing is they do start to take up a lot of room so we can always click this button right here and not show them anymore and we can even click over here and tell it to hide all of our other constraints and so now we've got a pretty clean drawing. But let's look at some of the power for this. I'm going to go ahead and turn these back on for a second. I'm going to select this line right here, this uh, dimensional constraint D1 and I'm just going to I'm just going to drag it. And as I drag we see that our size gets, our, our, our length gets um, longer and so does our depth. And then we also see that our circles moved as well. So that's really cool because we, we set that up. So we don't have to worry about going in and, and readjusting the location of all those holes. We can also come over here to our use defined variables and we can change the diameter, for example. We can change it to 200 and it will automatically change everywhere. 
and we can change this offset distance if we would like to. Let's change it to 500 and it moves them in. So that just kind of goes to show you again a little sampling of some of the power in the new parametric design options that we have in AutoCAD 2010 and although some of these take a little bit of time to set up initially they save a ton of time later uh, whenever you go to start making changes in your design uh, because you can just now I can work from over here on a lot of these values and update them with just a single change right here we also see that that our additional dimensional constraints are given names here and we can see what their values are so you could always come in here for example if if we wanted for whatever reason to change the distance here maybe uh, D9 needs to be offset 1 plus 100 and the same thing for D4 offset 1 plus 100 so again we can make those changes right there and we can again just come over here change our offset 1 maybe we change it to 400 here and everything adjust accordingly. Alright, well again spend some time replicating the procedures that we went through here in the commands and create your own user-defined variables and just have a lot of fun with it and then start thinking of creative ways to use it in your design.